Hello and welcome to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials number 8. Today we're going to be going over an even number calculator and uh, before we go ahead and get started on this program I just want to give a shout out to Budget Gaming. Uh, he came to me with a question about the program that we're going to be writing today. Um, I really appreciate you coming to me with your question and I really appreciate you having your code prepared um, showing me that you've actually made a genuine attempt which allows me to uh, be more willing to assist you. Um, anyways, like I said, thank you for the idea. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you guys, hope you personally enjoy this tutorial as well. So let's go ahead and get started. It is a bit of a hefty program. If you've noticed, I've already imported Scanner, the Scanner uh, Java.util.Scanner uh, library, and I'm also I've also uh, go ahead, went ahead and set up the class and the main method, as well as imported um, all of the variables that we're going to be doing. As you can see, we have three integers all set to zero right off the bat, and we have two booleans set to false right off the bat. Um, the reason why we do that is going to be covered a little bit later, but for now, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in a while loop, and this is going to be the first boolean that you do. So while loop value check for me equals false, and um, I know a lot of seasoned veterans to the programming world are going to be frowning at me for doing that. They would uh, most uh, good programming practice states that you want to start all of your loops, um, all of your boolean values with true, but it works easier in my head this way because we're checking to make sure that something is true. So the only way that per the loop is going to keep going is if it's false. So it's easier for me to keep check of that. So system dot out dot print line. This is just a, a standard prompt. Please enter the number of variables between one and twenty of them. That you would like to input. Period. Close that out. Value equals input dot next int close that oops forgot my semicolon okay so basically what we've done is we prompted them um, we do only want between 1 and 20 uh, numbers to be entered you can change those numbers as much as you like just bear in mind that the more numbers you tack on to the end of it the longer the potentially longer the program is going to take to run so let's go ahead and start an if statement here if value is less than 1 or this is the uh, the assignment operator, or the operator rather for or if it's just two vertical lines. If you're wondering how to get the vertical lines, you hold down shift and you push the button above your return key on most American or U.S. standard setup keyboards. So that's how you do that. Value and or if value is greater than 20. So basically, what we're doing is we're checking to see whether or not the uh, the value of uh, well the value of value is less than one or greater than two if so we're gonna tell them that they need to re-enter it and we're not gonna do anything to change the uh, the loop so we're gonna do uh, system dot out dot print line sorry the number of variables you input is out of the permitted range. Okay. And that's going to be that for the uh, that part of the if statement. So we're not going to make any changes because of course if it's true then we want them to go through it again. But if it's not true then we want value check to return true because they've done it correctly so now the statement is true. All right, so now that we're done with that, what we're going to do is we're going to declare the arrays that are actually, actually, I need to get out of this while loop first. So outside of the while loop, we're going to be declaring the arrays that we're going to be using in this program as a whole. So we want to do int, and then brackets, a equals new, int value. And this is essentially how you declare an, um, an array in Java programming. The reason why we declare it so far down as opposed to up here like we normally would with our other variables is because we don't know how many slots we want in the array until the user decides it. So this way, regardless of how many slots the user chooses to enter, the uh, the first array and the second array will always have that many slots. 
And as you see, I'm going to declare another one called titled B. And that's going to have the same number of slots. Now, granted, uh, we may not need the full number of slots for the second array. Actually, in most cases, you probably won't. But we have, as programmers, we have to assume the worst case scenario, and that would be that the user enters all even numbers, since that's the only thing we're adding. So you need as many slots as you would for the first array, just in case. Alrighty, so now we're going to do while input check equals equals false. This is going to be our second and last while loop. Now inside the while loop we're going to do a for loop for int x equals zero x is greater than a dot value or a dot length rather and that's the beautiful thing about um, Java programming is that um, checking or running your for loops based on the length of a an array or the length of a string or any the length of anything in general is relatively easy because of the dot length um, add-ons that have been tacked onto almost every single library there are there is that it's appropriate for. So a of x is going to equal input dot next line next int rather. Okay. So basically what that does is it's going to run through the for loop, it's going to ask the user to put an input in, and it's going to assign that to starting at the first slot. you got to remember that uh, programming languages start at zero. Zero still has value, so programming languages start at zero. So at the first slot, it's going to plug in that, and it's going to increment into the next slot, and it's going to plug in, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now still inside the for loop, we're um, actually going to put in an if statement just to double check that their, uh, their values aren't too big. And again, this is something characteristic that you can decide entirely. I'm just going to set it less than, or if a of x is greater than 100. And basically what that says is it can go up to 100, but if it goes to 101, you can't enter it. It'll tell you that it's wrong. But alternatively, if you wanted it to go to 99, if you didn't want it to touch 100, then you could just do um, greater than or equals to, which is this. This is the operator for greater than or equal to. But for this case, um, we just want to go up to 100. We don't want to touch 101. We're just going to do system dot out dot print line. The number you have entered is too large. Please re-enter. Okay, so that solves that. All right, so now outside of the uh, oops, outside of the for and the if statement, but still inside the while, we want to run an input check. So input check equals true. So basically, what happens is it's going to keep looping through until it's accepted, but if it's unaccepted, yeah, if it's not acceptable, then it's going to jump back up to the while loop and it's going to reprocess through the for loop. Otherwise, if it gets all the way through the for loop, then it's going to change the input check to true and we're going to be out of this while loop. So the last thing we want to do, give me one quick sec. The last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and declare another for statement, or for loop rather. And basically what's going to be in this for loop. Let me make sure I have all the right brackets. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we're missing a bracket there. I figured as much. Alright. So the next thing we want to do is we want to declare another for loop. So for int y equals zero. Y is greater than, or actually y is less than a dot length. Y plus plus. Alrighty. We're just going to do if inside the loop, of course, if a sub y, and we're going to do something called a modulus, which is the percentage sign. If you just type a percentage, it comes in kind of crooked, if you noticed, and we call that a modulus. So if a sub y mod 2 equals 0. So basically what the modulus does is it takes the remainder of an equation. So it takes a sub y 
and it divides it by whatever this number is, so it's going to take, for instance, if a sub y was 2, it's going to take 2 divided by 2, and that breaks even, so it's not going to have a remainder, so it will equal 0, and it will continue on. We're just going to do b, and this is where the next, uh, next array comes in, b counter, and that's where that counter variable comes in, equals a sub y, and then we're going to do counter plus plus. So basically what we're doing here is we're running through it and um, it's going to plug in to counter but we don't want this to have as much staggering as this. I mean we could but it doesn't seem appropriate. We'd have a whole bunch of zeros in between. So what we're doing is we're creating an entirely separate counter for that and we're only incrementing it when it gets uh, something plugged into the current value. So, uh, of course, that will leave a whole bunch of zeros at the end, but at least it doesn't stagger the zeros in between. It's just a characteristic preference of me. You could very well plug in Y right here in, uh, in place of counter, and it would still work just perfectly fine. But, again, it's just a mere preference for myself. So, all right, so outside of that for loop, um, we're going to go ahead and do another for and Z, and this is the last for loop for the program. We're almost done. And Z equals zero. Z is less than B dot length this time. And then Z plus plus. And we're going to do sum plus equals B. B sub Z. And then close that off. And then outside of the for loop, the very last thing we need to do is we need to type system dot out dot print line a comma. the sum of the even numbers you entered is, then put in that, plus sum, whoopsies, plus period. There we go. Okay, so let me go back up to this real quick. I did say that we were going to go over why we initialize these to zero later on in the video. And this is why. Whenever you're working with an integer, you need to declare the variables equal to zero, or it will come up with an error, error, error saying that the variables may not have been initialized. That's because um, when you declare a variable, specifically an integer, it automatically assigns the value to nil, N-I-L, which has no value according to the programming language unless otherwise specified, like we did here. And since nil has no value, it can't possibly declare an integer or an int array with nil slots unless you know it just can't do that so if any case were to happen where somebody were to accidentally bypass this while loop and we weren't able to run the value check then this would come back as nil which is why it insists that we declare variables with a value pre-standing and it's the same thing with the booleans. You need to declare it. I guess you could arrange these to true and reset these to true and reset these to false. Whatever is your preference, it's entirely up to you. But let's go ahead and compile this real quick and run the program. And I'm going to go ahead and choose 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it says the sum you have entered is 30. And I'm going to go ahead and whip out my calculator because with working with programs, you always want to double check the math. Not because the computer might be wrong, but because you might have programmed the computer to do something you didn't actually want it to do. So we're going to take all of the even numbers, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So 2, 4, 6, that's 8, and 6, and 10. As you can see, it does come out to 30, so we could rerun another test, but I'm sure it comes out perfectly fine. So that's about it for today's programming lesson. Um, the code will be in the description since this is a relatively long program to write. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I look forward to seeing you next time.